You're watching this video maybe because you've finished learning all about the nervous system and you want to revise and to write your own notes. So the best place to start is the parts of the nervous system. So we know there's the central nervous system and the peripheral. Central is the brain and the spinal cord and the peripheral is the nerves. So next it's best to tackle the neurons. The neurons are the cells that transmit the electrical impulse. It's really important that you do understand the structure of these cells. It's so important. So draw each one and label them in great detail. And the key labels which you should include in your diagram are dendrites, cell body, axon, Schwann cells, myelin sheath, the axon terminals and the neurotransmitter swellings. Not forgetting the arrow showing the direction of the impulse. And here are those neurons, sensory neurons sending impulses to the central nervous system, motor neurons out of the central nervous system to an effector and interneurons only within the central nervous system. Note the arrow. So you can see on the sensory and motor neurons, the myelin sheath, it's acting as that electrical insulator. The myelin sheath is also important because it speeds up the transmission of the impulse, which we're going to look at now. When a stimulus of a certain strength is detected by specialized cells known as receptor cells, this results in the generation of an impulse. And we have specialized receptor cells in our eye, like the rods and cones. The detection of the stimulus causes a change in the permeability of the neuron membrane to certain ions, sodium ions in particular. They move in, making that point more positive on the inside and negative on the outside. This happens the whole way along, but if there's a myelin sheath, it only needs to happen at the nodes of Ranvier. As the impulse passes, the permeability is reset, and this is called refractory period. No impulse can be transmitted during the refractory period. Be sure to revise threshold and the all or nothing law. They appear in exams frequently. Make sure you know what the synapse is, the presynaptic neuron, the postsynaptic neuron, and the synaptic cleft. Be able to discuss how the neurotransmitter chemicals result in the regeneration of the impulse. Not only should you be able to draw and label a synapse and discuss what happens, but you should know why they're important. One, they make the impulse travel in one direction only. Two, they're a way of passing on impulses from one neuron to another. And three, they're used in medication design. Some medications are based on stimulating the release of neurotransmitters, of blocking them or preventing their breakdown. Know the role of enzymes in breaking down those neurotransmitters and revise fully Parkinson's. Finally, the last section is to do with the brain and the spinal cord. So you know the brain is protected by the skull, but it's also surrounded by three membranes. And those three membranes are called the meninges. And in between those is that fluid, cerebrospinal fluid. Know that the brain is divided into two hemispheres and the forebrain is made up of the cerebrum, the thalamus and the hypothalamus. And the hindbrain is made up of the cerebellum and the medulla oblongata. Longata. Know a function of each of those parts and be able to identify them on a diagram. Next, it's the spinal cord, so be able to draw this and label it pretty well. So it's made up of white matter, which is axons only, and it's also made up of grey matter here in the centre in a H-shape, and it's made up of cell bodies and dendrites only. When we examine diagrams of the spinal cord, dorsal means back and ventral means front. The sensory neurons enter in through the dorsal root and it has a swelling, and the motor neurons exit through the ventral root towards some muscle. A reflex action is an automatic or an involuntary response to a stimulus, and it's there for our protection. And finally, a reflex arc is the nerve pathway involved in a reflex action. Very important to draw this. So if you think you know the content, go on now and do the exam questions. The more questions you do, the more you check the answers, the higher your grade. Good luck.